What's up, everybody? Welcome in. This is episode four of I Agree Go Cavs, the show where we agree and we say go Cavs. So I am your host, Jacob at Richism13, joined by Mr. Nick Carnes at Carnes is 817. Nick, how are you? This uh, well, it's it's Tuesday night as we record this. I just, you know, I I currently have the Cavs Knicks game on again because I'm watching it. I I was lucky enough to be there. there there's nothing there, I I can't stop smiling when when it comes to these Cavs. Like I I I know that that I missed the Saturday episode, but just catching up very briefly. What a win in Boston against the team that represented the Eastern Conference in the finals last year. What a win over New York. You're five and one. I can't stop smiling. This is great. Thanks for having me back. Here we are. It, it's it's really interesting because of how some of the other one particular other um, area team has started their season to see a team lose a very very prominent piece of of this puzzle and still be sitting here five of one. Um, getting ready to play Boston again, already having beat them once. And, and it'll be really interesting. Um, we're brought to you as always by our friends over at homage. I've got the, the, my, my Cavaliers, let them know shirt here in the wine and, the, and some gold lettering and some hoop ball and some things like that. We'll put a link to this shirt uh, in the description. Nick's got his NFL blitz uh, shirt, Nick Chubb, which is very, very appropriate. Of course I missed um, the Barking Browns this week, but uh, I will be on, if you're watching this on Wednesday, I'll be on with uh, with Eddie Mac uh, tonight for the Petty Eddie podcast to get my takes on the football team game. But all those great, awesome shirts, they're soft, they're great. Go get them. Go go be arrogant like me. I put the Browns Victory Monday shirt on, recorded a Ohio State pod with uh, our good friend Tyler Johnson wearing a Browns victory Monday prior to the game. And I wore some cat ears and then they whipped ass. So be arrogant out there guys. And it will have really good results for your sports teams. Hey, I'll tell you what, I just want to say this. My favorite stat of, of all of this is that last year, the Cavs were four and 14 without Darius Garland this year in five games without Darius Garland, they have yet to lose. So, if that doesn't tell you today. how much has changed, like with, without Darius Garland last year, the Cavs were non-functional on offense because Ricky Rubio had tore his ACL, you know, so they really didn't have, and, and, and just Donovan Mitchell is just powering. He is the engine that makes this team go. And it's, it's beautiful to watch. Did you hear there's some controversy around Donovan Mitchell? Controversy. Yeah. He hates guacamole. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I just saw a video of it. I'm not even kidding. Upset Ricky Rubio real bad. He didn't like that. I'll I'll tell you what. Uh, he he got the evil eye from uh, Avita's over here uh, with me, and she is a guacamole stan. And so, I hate it. it's gross. Guacamole's gross. I'm right with it. It's kind of weird. Te- uh, sometimes I'll eat it, but it's just it's a weird texture. I, I don't exactly. I, I don't. Exactly, and I don't do onions, so you know most okay. most guacamoles have have said that. But yeah, no, that's like the only bad thing you can say about Donovan Mitchell. (laughs) So let's talk more specifically about this matchup with the Knicks on Sunday, Mm -hmm. uh, just because that's where where we are after the quick hitter on Saturday as well, where we talked more about that, the Celtics game. I want to talk about some of these things that are going on. Let's, let's talk about some statistics first. Um, So Donovan Mitchell drops 38, uh, 38 and 12. What was that stat? Thirty-eight and twelve assists, three rebounds. He had like two chase down blocks too. Don't don't forget that he LeBroned a couple plays there uh, against the Knicks. Um, what was that stat that like six times last year he had seven or more assists uh, for right. for Utah? Yeah, um, it, I, I think that it, the number was six assists, but I don't remember the amount of times he he had that or more. It wasn't a very high number, but he's he's getting there. Like he's yeah. not necessarily coming in here to be the facilitator, but that's what they've needed him to do was score a bunch of points and facil- facilitate the offense. And he's done all of that and more so far. And it's just, we, we can't stop talking about how good Donovan Mitchell is. Uh, even if you don't like his take on guacamole, you still got to admit like this dude came in and in, was asked to do even more because Garland goes down in the first half 
or yeah, in the first half of the first game. And, and even more than he was asked, it's like, Hey, yeah, there's other players on there. Evan Mobley has 16 points, 29 giant points from K love off the bench. Dean Wade has been playing pretty well, 22 points from him. You know, there's other guys that are contributing, but you're losing the, what you would say Garland is probably the main assist guy, right? Like yeah. he's going to yeah. probably lead the team in assist when everything is said and done. You lose that. And now you're like, okay, I know I need you to drop 30 a night, but can you also drop like seven or eight assists? Yeah. Even though I know you didn't do a ton of that in Utah last year, could you maybe do that for, for right now? And he's like, yeah, no, yeah, it's good. Yeah. But because what, what emphasizes that is that he was, it happened single digit times that he had over six assists last year in Utah. He's averaging seven assists a game right now. I mean, that's, that is blowing that stat completely out of the water. Like, and, and there's been some, some a couple of, of trolls on Twitter that are trying to say, Oh, Donovan Mitchell, he'll come back down to earth or whatever. I would argue that he is taking his game to the next level. This is this, what we're seeing right now. Although a small sample size is the ascension of a player that's 26 in their prime and truly adding new aspects to his game. Yeah. And, and, and I get it. It's a long season. There's still a ton out in front of them, but it keeps happening, man. <clears throat> it just keeps at a certain point you can't I, and you know what you can go i saw some people and i haven't gotten the opportunity to write on this yet um <clears throat> for our website over at network 216 ohio.com selfish plug right there and uh there's some suggestions out there that like oh maybe they overpaid for donovan mitchell are you watching these games are you watching them like at all like because like I, I don't know how you overpay for a superstar. What were you going to get with those picks? Donovan Mitchell? No, I don't think so. No. Nah. Well, I, and that, that, that's the biggest point, right? The Cavs showed you last year that they are no longer going to be a lottery team, right? Yeah. They, they, they were on the fringe of the playoffs as one of the most hurt teams in the NBA last year. They literally missed it by the play-in play -in game. So – as soon as you're out of the lottery in the NBA draft, you, your chance of getting a truly impactful type, like any piece of percentage of what Donovan Mitchell gives you is, is, is minuscule. So yeah. I know you're talking about all these first round picks, but their value is substantially lower once you're no longer a perennial lottery team. So give F them picks, F them, like, take yeah. them, F them, every one of them. Hey, you know, and, and look right now what's going on with Kyrie Irving and LeBron James, and let's have some fun. All right, so Donovan Mitchell, he's a superstar. Stop telling anybody otherwise because you're silly if you think otherwise. That's it. That's it. We're, we're done. We're done talking about that. That is, that is where it's going. Let's talk about – I want to talk about Dean Wade for a second because, you know, they go with this – Dean Wade has been kind of the odd man in terms of – who needed to step up. I was I almost said odd man out, but he's been the one that needed to kind of step up because, you know, they start Isaac Okoro uh, that I believe he started that first game that Garland missed, right? Game two, I think he started that and he might've even started the third one. But he just didn't play very well. So then they went to kind of Dean Wade for the last couple of games. I can't remember, but so Okoro, he just, his shot's not there and we'll get to there. Cause there's, it's just, I, I mean, if he's given, he gave you like a plus 24 while he was on the court uh, against the Knicks and he scored two points, which is just kind of a testament to what he can do on the defensive end, which is why he gets the minutes that he gets, yep. but you know, they needed someone to step up cause they needed some more scoring. And after Karis Levert goes crazy for 41, he gets one point in this game. And, and so now you're leaning to, although I will give Levert his eight assists and some of the things he did out there was still very important. But in this game in particular, you needed some more scoring. Uh, yeah. Between Karis Levert and Jared Allen, you had seven points. And, you know, Okoro doesn't work out in that starting lineup as a score, so you bring Dean Wade on. And Dean Wade's just, I don't know, man. Like, I made a joke about his beard being too big for his face, but <laughs> apparently that's his superpower. Like, I don't – Dean Wade's out there, and I'm just – I feel like Dean Wade – I know they're not, like, nearly the same player, but, like, I sometimes I get flashbacks of Kyle Korver. Like, like, you'll, like he just kind of has a very similar – if at least 
maybe in my mind, I may be completely wrong and somebody will rip me apart, but I just, it kind of like the, the shooting motion and the size of the players, they just kind of remind me of each other. And it's just like, Oh, Hey, here's that, that, that tall white guy on the outside. Oh, whoop, bang. Okay. All right. Bang. Let's, got it. Boom. Chakalaka. I got it. We're, we're rolling. So like, what do you feel about with Dean Wade, man? Like he's always been kind of that guy that just, like, you know, he'll give you some quality minutes here and there, but like, since he's come now three or four games in a row where he's shooting, I don't know, it's something stupid. Is it close to 60% from three or something like that? So, it's yeah. absolutely ludicrous. Like, yeah. where are you having Dean Wade, man? I, you know what? I, I don't think those numbers are incredibly difficult to sustain. However, 2.5. I mean, that's nuts. But, you know, as long as he's going to keep, keep, I'm riding the wave for as long as possible. I, I do think. You know, we talked a lot last year about uh, how the Cavs are, you know, one of the youngest teams in the NBA and, 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 and all this youth and potential they have. Well, I think, again, you know, as, as we, I was saying with Donovan Mitchell before, I think you're starting to see these guys, you know, develop and, and grow. And, and I really think JB, that's a credit to JB Bickerstaff and, and his whole coaching staff because genuinely you can see that. Um, and, and you know what? I, I want to say this too. Uh, I, I'm watching the, the replay of the, of the Knicks game right now. There's truly an offensive scheme here. They're, they're running plays. They're getting guys good shots. They're getting them good looks. I don't think that's that's the most common thing across. Like, there's a lot of teams that you watch that don't look as well uh, coordinated as the Cavs do. And so part of that credit, I think, is scheme. However, I, I, Dean Wade, I, he, he looks confident. He's shooting well. I just um, He has really been a piece that, that, that where the Cavs had a lot of question marks, he's answering the bell and more. And, and that, I mean, you're five and one. I, there's nothing not to love about that. No, I, I, it's just you, you, it almost becomes a game of like who's going to step up tonight. Like yeah. – Kevin Love drops 29 points in 22 minutes off the bench. And it was just like, it was vintage Kevin Love, you yep. know, on Sunday night. And it was just, I, I'm a big Kevin Love guy. I've said that multiple times here uh, on the podcast, but he, he just, I don't know what, what to even start telling guys about this right now, but it's just like, if they don't care, like this is such a selfless team when you talk about like, I don't care if Dean Wade's going to hit a bunch of buckets. All right, Dean Wade, you can hit a bunch of buckets. Okay. Love, you're going to hit a bunch of buckets. And, and I look at these numbers uh, real quick. So uh, uh, across the board assists, three assists for Mobley, three for Dean Wade, one for Allen, 12 for Mitchell, eight for Levert, one from Kevin Love, two from Isaac Okoro and three from Raul Neto. Like, Okay, so you're, you talk about this offensive scheme. They're setting up, making – what is like Austin Carr said, says it all the time, looking for that extra pass, right? Like find the extra pass, find the extra man. Yeah, that guy is open, but that guy is more open. And I think it's a testament to guys not being like, well, I'm kind of open and I want this shot, so I'm going to take this shot, as opposed to being like, well, but Dean Wade or Kevin Love or, you know, or – Donovan Mitchell or somebody, he's more open and that's going to increase our chance of hitting that bucket by, uh, you know, a 5% or whatever it is, but, but it's going to be a better chance. And I just think these guys are willing to at any point, just be like, all right, that's fine. And like, here you go, shoot that bucket. And I think that it's going to be really interesting because you say, well, where does Darius Garland fit into this? Where does he fit back into this? And it's like, is he going to take shots away from guys? Like what's going to happen? Is it, I mean, the dude's going to go out there and run the offense. And I yep. think what it's going to do is it's going to make this, this roster, even the bench, even more potent because you're going to put, you're probably going to put Dean Wade back on the bench and Karis Levert's probably going to go back to the three, like he did on opening night. And you're going to do that sort of thing. So, but you're also having the ability to kind of swap these guys out where there was this, this theme that was going over the broadcast on, on, on the uh, opening night in Toronto, where they were saying that JB really wants to have either Mitchell or Garland on the court at all times. And I don't know that they have to do that when he comes back because yeah. 
Karis LeVert's playing the way he is. Neto is even playing the way he is. And it's like these guys are out there playing selfless basketball that I don't think you absolutely have have to have one of the top two facilitators right. on the court because I think all of them are, are willing to do whatever it is to, to win the game. You, you know, to, to build off of that, I, I think – it, that's probably what makes this team so fun is that there really is like a, a lack of ego. It's just whoever's night it is. And you see that not only are they, they making the extra pass, but on the defensive end, uh, I, I think there were definitely questions with Karis Levert as a defender. There were definitely questions with Donovan Mitchell as a defender. And, and I'm not saying these guys are, are amazing on the, although the Cavs, Defensive rating is one of the one of the best that combined combined. I think it's only them and the Suns that are in the top ten of both offense and defense. But my point overall is just that you see constant effort from everyone, right? Like Karis LeVert may not be the best defender in the world, and yes, Donovan Mitchell's uh, is like six foot one, but they are. And, and you saw the extra effort chase down Donovan Mitchell play. You you see Karis LeVert, you know, locking in and and and, and really just you can tell he's doing everything he can. And I think everybody, all the Cavs are seeing this type of effort. And and that's why they're being selfless on the offensive end, because everybody has bought in and is working towards the same thing. It, I truly think that's a special thing because you watch some of these other teams that you've kind of hinted at. Uh, I don't think they've got the same type of chemistry or collective effort or uh, – just unity that it really feels like. And, and that's the most surprising thing to me is just Donovan Mitchell is just slotted into this roster. Like, like, and, and it just fits. It's just, it's, it's perfect. I, 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 I mean, I can't think of a, a trade that's worked out this well immediately in any Cleveland sport. Honestly, I, I it's crazy I, because, because this is a, a seismic shift. Like Donovan Mitchell is, is that guy. He, you said he's a superstar and he is. And normally it takes time to gel, to work together. And it's just not here. We talked about this on like the first or second episode somewhere, uh, probably the second or third episode of this podcast. We, we were discussing um, how you would have thought of the guys that got hurt. You would have thought it was the new guy that got hurt based on the way they've responded mm -hmm. because of exactly what you said. He's just, he walked in and, and, and I think you said this the other day uh, on the show, you said, you know, he walked in like he'd been here his whole career. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was just like, yep. Always been playing under JB Bickerstaff. Always been playing with, you know, Karis LeVert and Darius Garland and all these guys. And, and I, yeah, you don't have to worry about the fact that your leader last year is, during that really magical season that they had compared to what they thought they were going to have. And, and, and the guy that exploded on the scene and Darius Garland is going to go down in the first half of the first game. And he's going to miss five games. Cause that's what he's missed so far. We don't know if he'll play tonight, it, it, this show airing on Wednesday. Um, although he did practice today, he did practice on Tuesday, which is the first thing. First time he has, I saw some images. There's still a little bit of swelling on that eye, but he can actually see out of it. So that's, <laughs> that's step one, man. I, I that, that feels like such a, like we talk about injuries so much with football and basketball and all these other sports. That is such a truly unique injury where you're just like, like if your ankle hurts, you can be like, you know what? It hurts really, really bad. I can't move. I can't play. Mm -hmm. It's simple. That's simple. With the eye, it's like, well, it hurts, but I can see. <laughs> well, but can you see enough? Well, yeah. I think so. <laughs> and you know, just it feels like one of these, like, I don't really know how to decide if I can play based on this with this eye half closed or whatever it is. And I thought that was kind of an interesting thing talking about that. So I, I, I just, I look at this and I look at a team that is, you know, they shot 46% from deep. They shot 46.1 overall, 84% on the uh, free throws. They were 16 of 19. They've been one of the better free throw teams in uh, basketball so far, except, except when they played the Celtics. They shot really poor from the line against the Celtics in a real a match where you don't or, uh, match a game where you don't want to leave points on the court, yeah. and they did, and they won. 
And, oh. and you talk about the defensive side, man, and we look at this. So let's break down this Knicks game and talk about the, the defensive side on it, right? So you're looking at, you know, it's 35-30 uh, Cavs first quarter, 27-29 Cavs third quarter or second quarter. So they go in with, with the lead, uh, the three-point lead in halftime. So they go in, they've got a three-point lead, and you're like, okay, cool. Got a three-point lead. I feel pretty good about this. They get outscored 34 to 22 in the third, and you're just kind of like, man, what? Like, we've got to start getting some stops. They go into that fourth quarter and let up 15 points. They had let up over 90 points in three quarters. They allowed 15 points while dropping 37 of their own in the fourth quarter. It's a beautiful thing. What? Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm trying to find the words to really yeah. say how that makes me feel, but it's like, I, I don't know, man. Like that's that is exactly what you want in the fourth quarter. That's exactly how you when you need to step up and clamp down, and you have to go on a scoring route, and you got to go on these runs. Like they they had a couple like ten nothing runs that were just blink of an eye. This team can just when they. Excuse me. When they get hot, they just start get to get rolling. And real quick, before I forget, and before we kind of wrap this thing up, we're going to take a quick break uh, and hear from our friends over at Underdog uh, Fantasy. What's up, everybody? We know that we know that daily fantasy never stops, and Network Two One Six is proud to be a partner with Underdog Fantasy. Very simple to use. All you have to do is go to Underdog. Go to underdogfantasy.com and you will just click the sign in button. You'll create an account if you haven't done so already. If you've not created an account, it'll ask you to enter a code. Enter code 216 and they will double your first deposit up to $100. Underdog Fantasy live draft lobbies that you get to compete with you and your friends. It's no salary cap like DraftKings and FanDuel. You get to go to a draft lobby, pick the players you want, or you can do daily pickums which give you access to all the nfl and nba games for you to make your picks every single night again go to underdogfantasy.com or use the underdog fantasy app on ios or android use code 216 to double your first deposit up to 100 dollars. sign up today hey i won 20 bucks on um on uh, underdog last week did you really yeah, twenty bucks. I paid like ten dollars to be in that league. But <laughs> when I've lost pretty much all my other money, I had a I had a really good. Uh, I picked between the London game and the Thursday night football game, and I, I did pretty good. I was actually in like fifteenth or something place where like first prize was like fifty thousand, so I was like really close to to uh, you know to having something to talk about. <laughs> Winning is winning. It's money's money, right? We'll just yeah. keep using it. Yeah. I right, mean, let's 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 kind of shift gears real quick as we wrap this thing up, and let's kind of talk about um, Wednesday night's matchup. Let's talk about going back. Uh, well, not going to Boston. I'm sorry, Boston comes to town uh, right before the Cavs head out on um, an interesting West Coast uh, trip. They're gonna be gone. Was it uh, five five games, eight days uh, out west, or something like that? I think is the is the trip. So let's look forward to Boston, man. You you had a situation. If Darius Garland is back, what do you think? Let's let's say with him first. How do you think that goes tomorrow? Uh, is it seamless like it was before? Does he just slide back in there? Um, is there some, kind of some growing pains? Or, or how do you feel if, if, if Garland makes uh, his return against the Celtics? I do think it'll take them some time to figure out because, you know, Donovan Mitchell has been very – and, and so I say the words ball dominant, although he's been a, a great distributor, a lot of it goes through him. So it's always an adjustment when your initiator is changed, I think. So and, and credit to Donovan for uh, sliding into that role so seamlessly. But I think it's going to require an adjustment from him. And then and then Darius is also going to be figuring out uh, kind of how how to split that with him. So. So I do think that there will be some adjustment there, but if if the chemistry between them is anything like the rest of this team, which I have no reason to believe it isn't, because if there's a, a duo that's looked like 
you know, they're the tightest knit. It's definitely Darius and Donovan, or at least that's that's what I've gathered from like watching just videos, pictures, that that, that kind of stuff. Um, so I I do think there will be some transition there, but the, the Cavs have just been fantastic. I have no I mean, they went to Boston. I mean, Jared Allen missed that free throw that that could have, have won them the game in regulation and they battle in overtime and win anyway. I have no reason to think that the Cavs can't win this game. And and, and you know what? Home court advantage at, at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse is rocking. You know, so so I think that's a big piece too. I hope Darius Garland's back. This game's on ESPN, right? And I think they'll they'll know that it's a nationally televised game finally, because the Cavs really didn't have any last year. So it's a big game. I think they're going to treat it that way. I think the Cavs can win this game. I, I they've been off since since Sunday. Now it'll be Wednesday, so that's a nice nice break there. Um, I think they'll be ready. I'm really excited. Um, I just, I, until I, you show me otherwise, they're going to keep shooting the ball the way they're shooting the ball. And all of a sudden this team from deep reminds me of the 2015, 2016 Cavs who were just lights out from deep and, and, and just hit everything and set some franchise records. And, and yet, and yet all of those three point shooters and some records were set on Sunday. So I know just, it's a team record. That duo, the second duo ever to hit eight three pointers uh, in a game, and I just, I, I just saw Donovan Mitchell hit a three just now. It's, it's, it's amazing because you know what? That's the last thing I want to leave you with. Um, Donovan Mitchell wasn't a prolific three point shooter in Utah. He was good, but he wasn't, yeah. and he is just shooting the lights out. It, it's crazy how, how high of a level. It's like five and one is such a tremendous. I I don't think you can you can say it enough that five and one it, without Darius Garland is an incredible start for this team. I agree. Go Cavs. I agree. Go Cavs. We'll see you Saturday night, eight o'clock live for the full episode. See you guys then.